All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be a look at this knife and also a little bit of information about the current status of the Queen Cutlery in-house brands, including Queen City, um, post Queen shutting down in 2018. So first of all, let's take a look at the knife. As you can see, it comes in a pretty nice box here, it has a magnetic top, it has the Queen City logo in there, and then a nice cutout for the knife. So we'll set the box aside. And as you can see, this is a canoe pattern. And the first thing I noticed about this knife uh, was these nice abalone cover um, covers or handle material. Um, I was somewhat surprised to see that it's what a lot of people consider to be real abalone. So uh, what that means is it's not a veneer sheet, or it's not a sheet of abalone at the bottom of the cover, and then a veneer of acrylic over top of it. It actually has, you know, some depth to that abalone. Uh, now, one thing you'll notice about that is that it does have a filler. So there's abalone, and it is what, again, you consider real abalone, what GEC sometimes calls LVS abalone, um, but it does have a filler below the abalone. And real quick, I wanna show a comparison to an older Queen Cutlery knife, um, one of my favorites. And this is also what you'd consider real abalone, but as you can see, it doesn't have that filler. So it's a little bit thicker in the amount of abalone on this knife. Um, but it is the same type of material. Uh, so I appreciate that. I really like abalone. I have you know, several knives with abalone handle uh, covers, and I thought that that was a nice touch. But then the second thing you notice about this knife is that the, the covers are not pinned. And just like how I really don't like it when a shield is unpinned and only glued, I also don't like it when the covers are unpinned and only glued. Um, now this is not an, ex an overly expensive knife, uh, so at the price point, it's not a surprise to me at all that these covers are not pinned, but it is something that, that I'm not a huge fan of. Um, the third thing you notice about this knife, or the third thing I noticed about this knife, is that it's very clearly a knife made by the same manufacturer that makes Rough Rider knives. So I have a Rough Rider canoe, and this is the Easy Money canoe, and you can see that they are the same knife, the same pattern. Um, very obviously the same design, same dimension, same size, um, same spring setup, same blade setup. A few differences, uh, they do both have the match strike, but the Rough Rider actually has swedging on both blades. Whereas the Queen City does not, has no swedging. Um, but very, very obvious, and then uh, the last difference is obviously the Queen City doesn't have the Rough Rider stamp on the bolster or the pinched bolsters. Um, so very obviously to me made by the same manufacturer as Rough Rider, and what that means is that this is a knife made in China. Okay, uh, so um, big difference for Queen City. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. But overall, it's a nice knife. Um, this knife cost under $30 before shipping and uh, getting abalone, what's again, real abalone uh, and a relatively well-made knife. It, it has not the strongest pulls in the world. I would say maybe a four, uh, four-ish on the pulls, four and a half maybe, uh, probably four, but snappy as you can see in here. And both, you know, both blades are snappy like that. Um, you know, no major issues like, you know, no big gaps. You can see there's maybe a slight gap there, but um, honestly, I don't even think that's a gap. I think that's just that that spring is a little lower. Um, so, you know, relatively little gap. Actually, I just noticed that there's actually some relatively serious gaps there between the bolsters and the liners. So I didn't notice that until now. Interesting thing. But other than that, um, pretty well made. And, and even, you know, with that, uh, no glaring or mechanical issues. Although I will have to look at that a little closer. Um, but this knife is a Queen City branded knife. And to get into the discussion of this brand, 
Queen City was an in-house brand for Queen Cutlery. And unfortunately, Queen Cutlery closed its doors in 2018, January of 2018. It was one of the longest running traditional knife makers in America and you know, ran alongside um, Great Eastern Cutlery in Titusville, Pennsylvania and is where Bill Howard, who is now the, the owner of Great Asian Cutlery, got his start. So Queen is a really, really well um, known and long time, you know, giant in the traditional knife industry. They've made a lot of knives for a lot of different brands. Um, and this Queen City was one of their brands. So it, it kind of like every other brand in the traditional knife, you know, history uh, was a little bit you know, fluid and what it was and who was making it and stuff like that. Um, but uh, it's always really confusing to look at the history of, of traditional knife brands. Um, there's a lot of ins and outs to, to most of them. But for Queen City, uh, it was generally considered to be a working knife brand. It would use 1095 steel versus the D2 steel that the Queen Cutlery knives used. And um, was you know in recent more recent years a, a lower fit and finish more of a working knife than the queen um just queen knives now there was a time i believe where the queen city were a higher end knife um than the queen cutlery so that's where it gets a little confusing but more recently they were the working knives with 1095 steel versus the d2 now i think in part that that's what this knife is meant to be um so this knife is a knife that I got from Chicago Knife Works, but it is a knife ordered or, or produced by Smoky Mountain Knife Works or whoever their parent company is. And like I said, it, it was, you know, under $30 and it is a Chinese made knife. So it's, it's not necessarily meant to be a, a super high end knife. So these, the, the choice of putting this abalone on is an interesting choice to me. Um, now, Queen Cutlery itself often had fancy handle materials. Again, like the one I showed here, the, the copper head with abalone. And then here is another Queen knife that has a Sheffield jigged pearl handle. So this is a good example of Queen Cutlery. Very fancy handle material, nicely made. Um, this one actually, uh, I believe, has D2. It could also have 420. Um, it's sometimes hard to tell with Queen, uh, but it's an example of the fact that it would be more usual to see a Queen knife rather than a Queen City knife have these fancy handle materials. So it's an interesting choice, but you know, it's not something that I'm against. Uh, so Queen City is one of the in-house brands of Queen Cutlery, and it came about relatively recently, earlier this year, uh, that Smoky Mountain Knife Works really quietly brought this knife to market. So this is a Queen Mini Trapper Pilot Test Run, and it was designated the QN1. And as you can see, this is actually a USA-made knife. Uh, so they brought this knife out, again, without really much advertising or anything like that. They brought it to the market, and it was kind of a surprise to a lot of traditional knife collectors. And what they ended up um, explaining is that this knife was really brought to market as a trademark um, defense uh, to secure this, this trademark or copyright or whatever for Queen. Um, and they also confirmed, as a lot of people had suspected, that they purchased the Queen brand. Um, so when Queen Cutlery closed in 2018, they, they auctioned off all of their you know, supplies and, and machines and the brands. And um, there were different people who you know, said might be buying them, but it you know, has been confirmed now that Smoky Mountain Knife Works or their parent company, again, purchased the Queen brand. And this is a knife that they brought out to defend that, that copyright or trademark or whatever. Uh, it is a USA made knife, like I said, but honestly, it's, it's not a high end knife. So this knife again was around $30, I believe, maybe a little bit more 40. Uh, not the highest fit and finish, um, kind of what I would call as ground or close to as ground blades, um, Delrin handles, 
uh, you know, not the greatest, you know, not perfect construction, not terrible, certainly would be a great working knife. But it's an interesting kind of dichotomy between these two. They did say that they would be coming out with a Queen City knife, and they own the Queen City brand also. And this seems to be that knife. This is the Queen City, you know, QC001 is the um, etch for this blade, for this model. Um, so these seem to be the knives that Smoky Mountain Knife Works has brought to the market to uh, defend or um, secure these trademarks or copyrights, whichever it is. And it's a little bit interesting because I, I this is a USA made knife, but it's not necessarily a high end knife. And then this is a Chinese made knife, but it has these abalone scales. So it kind of, I'm not exactly sure what Smoky Mountain Knife Works plans to do with these brands, as in which directions they plan to take them. Um, now, I am happy to see that this knife was made in the USA. I was hoping that they would find a, a manufacturer who could bring the Queen City knives to the market uh, in the USA, um, manufactured in the USA for, you know, a, a good price. Um, it looks like they have, you know, at least for this first knife, decided to go with a Chinese manufacturer um, and the, the manufacturer that makes Rough Rider. Uh, but I was hoping that they would both stay USA made. It would just be nice. Um, not that I, I buy, you know, have anything against, um, you know, buying knives from overseas. I do uh, have other Rough Riders and, and like them. Just, I think, you know, the brands, the historic um, traditional knife brands, are going you know out of the USA um, pretty quickly and the more we can keep manufacturing in the USA I think it is a good thing uh, so I was hoping to see that the, these Queen City would be made in the USA but I do definitely hope that they continue to make the Queen knives in the USA I would be disappointed to see that that happen otherwise um, but Smoky Mountain Works definitely owns these two brands there was some you know, I've heard some some word from the the people involved themselves uh, that uh, other people involved in the traditional knife industry uh, had considered or attempted to buy um, these brands, and it just didn't work out. Uh, I did hear the price that they sold for, and it was um, pretty high, higher than I, I would have maybe guessed. Uh, although I'm not, you know, necessarily an insider in the in the community or know how much traditional knife brands go for, but it did go for um, a pretty solid price. So uh, they, they did get sold to Smoky Mountain Knife Works, and I do think that they are going to use these brands. So keep an eye out um, for both Queen and Queen City knives coming from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Uh, so I'm glad to have gotten these two, uh, these, these first of the brands since Queen closed down. Again, they're not necessarily perfect knives, uh, but I'm happy that the brands haven't just, you know, flat out died. And one thing I wanted to mention in this video also is that there is another uh, in-house brand owned by Queen Cutlery that a lot of people are really familiar with that I haven't mentioned yet that was not purchased by Smoky Mountain Knife Works, and that's Shatton Morgan. So Shatton Morgan was generally Queen's higher end uh, knives. So I'll show you this knife as an example. This is a really nice knife um, that just recently they kind of dried up. There were uh, at least one, if not a couple, uh, dealers that still had these available at like a really good price. Um, but they, they just recently dried up, I believe, so I'm really glad I have one. This is a Shatton Morgan office knife in Mammoth Ivory. And so this shows you, you know, the kind of knife that would be on the Shatton Morgan brand. A, you know, fancy handle material, kind of maybe some extra touches like the pinched and lined bolsters, and just a really nice knife. And the Shatton Morgan brand was also sold. Now, um, I have been told who purchased it, but I am not sure that they like want their name out there. Um, so I'm not going to uh, necessarily say their name. I also am not 100% sure uh, whether it was an individual who purchased it or if they purchased it via a company. It's again, just like most traditional knife history, um, really confusing. Uh, but if I do get, you know, the okay to, to put it out there who purchased it, I will put that in the description. 
but I believe it was purchased by um, someone who plans to actually, you know, try to continue the Shat and Morgan brand as it had been. Um, so using even possibly, I've heard the same uh, machines that Queen was using, whether that's the case or not, you know, we'll see. Uh, but definitely in the same tradition. So, you know, high-end knives made in the USA. So that's something that I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do with the Shatton Morgan brand and something we'll just have to, you know, wait and see. Um, so keep your eyes out for that also for news about Shatton Morgan knives. And, uh, you know, if, if you hear about it before me, let me know because it's something that I would like to, you know, get one once they, they start bringing them back to the market. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, looking at the Queen City number one from Smoky Mountain Knife Works that I purchased from Chicago Knife Works, and talking about the current state of the Queen brands, uh, formerly owned by Queen Cutlery in Titusville, now owned by both Smoky Mountain Knife Works and another outfit that's a little bit less clear. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, uh, please like it. It lets me know what kind of videos people like and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, that way you see what other videos I post and if you hit the bell, uh, you'll get notified so you don't miss any of them. Also check out my um, Instagram and Facebook at Knife Thoughts. I post lots of pictures of knives like this and such. And uh, my website, knifethoughts.com. Um, I plan to do an article on the history of these Queen brands uh, to go along with this video and kind of flesh it out a little bit once I have more information. <clears throat> so again, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments or anything to add to this, uh, definitely leave a, a comment. And as always, don't forget to go out and do good.